As far as the song we just sang and all the, all the other songs is that lately I've, well, I say for quite some time now, I've felt sick. I've had sinus, I, I've had very bad sinus problems. I have a hernia that I'm about to get fixed in two weeks. I'm so excited about that. I've been living for this, with this for about two years now. And, uh, and, and I'll use it as an excuse. That's why I don't exercise. Seriously, though, it really does. If you've ever had a hernia before, especially an umbilical hernia, uh, picking up very little things makes it very painful. But the goal, go, go from that of just saying that uh, not only has the physical pain been here for me, but also the turmoil that's going on in the world, the things that are going on on the news and the political stuff and the rioting and the, uh, all that stuff that's going on has brought me down and caused me anxiety and caused me a lot of anger. And if it, my friends, I talk to them all the time. They're like, you need to chill out. But that's the thing is that I, I've come to the realization, and this is what the Lord led me to talk about this morning, is that, is that I'm not relying on the Lord enough. And I, I'm afraid all of us are. But the problem is that I'm seeing, I'm seeing my friends and seeing other people that uh, Christians are justifying on like behavior. And they're saying, well, it's okay because they're doing this and, and they're, they're doing that and everything. But the problem is, is that it's still on Christ-like behavior. And we should never, because on Christ-like behavior is ultimately what? A sin. So we don't need to be doing that. So my attitude has been bad and I haven't been relying on the Lord enough. And Isaiah 40, 31 says, but, for, but those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Well, obviously, I haven't been doing that enough because I'm not thinking about that. My behavior has not been where it should be, but I've been trying to, but I have to ask the question, has yours? And I know if you're, if you're like my friends that I talk to on a regular basis on the phone and everything, no, it hasn't been. It's not, it's, it's not where it should be. Are any of us trusting in God for answers? are relying on media and the internet and the blatant lies told by all politicians on both sides of the fence. They're all lying about things. We as Christians, and these are th some things that just, I just brought up from the th top of my head, prayer for guidance for the day, reading our Bible, prayer for clarity from the word. When you read the Bible, clarify what you read. Seeking the lost and sharing his love. Praying for these opportunities to expand the kingdom. Praying for God to help you discern the truth. Loving the ones who make life hard. And thanking God for help, helping you through the, all the bad times and praising him for all the good ones. This is a big one right here because I'm afraid that it, sometimes we don't... Uh, we don't praise God for the good times. We only think about God when everything's going bad. Amen? I'm sure all of us are guilty of that. You might be thinking to yourself, I've heard all this stuff before, but my question to you, have you been doing it? Do you take an opportunity to, you, do you say, Lord, I want to praise you for all the good times and all the bad times? Do you say, Lord, uh, I need an opportunity to share with someone, so if you ask for that, he's going to send someone your way. But do you do it? Do you, ask for the, do you ask the Lord to give you an opportunity to share his love and are you seeking the lost? Even the most devout Christians go through times where, they're, where they aren't leaning on the Lord enough. Do you think of all these things and do them throughout the day? The Bible is clear when it says in Philippians 3, 2 through 11. Watch out for dogs. Watch out for evil workers. Watch out for those who mutilate the flesh. For we are the circumcision, the ones who serve by the Spirit of God, boast in Christ Jesus, and do not put confidence in the flesh. Although I once had also had confidence in the flesh, if, only, if anyone else thinks he has grounds for confidence in the flesh, I have more. We're talking about Paul here. Circumcised on the eighth day of the nation of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews, regarding the law of the Pharisees. Regarding zeal, I persecuted the church. Regarding the righteousness of, that is in the law, I'm blameless. But everything that was, was a gain to me, I have considered to be a loss because of Christ. 
More than that, I also consider everything to be lost in view of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. Because of him, I have suffered the loss of all things and consider them filth so that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own from the law, but one that is through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. My goal is to know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death. Throughout Philippians, Paul talks about how righteous he is compared to the, to the people of the time. And in, in any case, he was. He was super. I mean, he did everything. He did everything just as he was supposed to. He would make any of us look shameful as far as our Christian walk goes. But the key was, he said, as good as I am, it matters. It doesn't matter worth a flip. It doesn't matter at all. Because compared to Christ, I am as filthy rags as, as he puts it. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how good you are. You can always be better. You should always be trying to attain that. We as Christians, and prove me wrong, are apathetic we're complacent and we're lazy. If we weren't, I would, I would dare to say we wouldn't have an empty seat in this sanctuary. We'd be looking at trying to build something, build something bigger to try to house us. Even in this time of a pandemic, we are. Good thing the Lord loves us anyways. Paul addresses that with all the churches in, the, in, in, the, in that time frame. And I will dare to say, if we were focused on the Lord before all this stuff happened, like we should be, the pandemic and the rioting and the political upheaval wouldn't bother us, wouldn't bother me. Because I would be more focused on the Lord than anything else. And I think about, as I think about this, I think about the song, the song that one of my favorite songs, there's something about that name. And the words of this are just so meaningful. You can sing along with me if you like. Jesus, 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 there's just something about that name. Master, Savior, Jesus, like the fragrance after the rain jesus 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 let all heaven and earth proclaim kings and kingdoms will all pass away but there's something about that name once again just like that the last the last, uh, verse four the kings and kingdoms will all pass away but we still need to be focused on jesus because if we're focused on jesus we don't worry about all the rest of that stuff i want to mention this it made me think of a little story the pastor and the glass of water a lady went to her pastor and said pastor i'm leaving your church he looked at her and went why lady said, I saw a woman gossiping to another church member. A man in the church is a hypocrite. The worship team is living wrong. People are looking on their phone during the service. I'm going to say that again. People are looking on their phone during the service. Among so many other things wrong with your church. The pastor replied, okay. But could you do me one favor before you, before you, uh, before you leave? He said, would you please go get a glass of water, and I want you to fill up that glass of water almost to the top. And then I want you to take that glass of water, and I want you to walk around the church three times. Don't, don't spill a drop, because we don't water on the floor in the sanctuary. That would be terrible. So she goes and gets a glass of water, and she walks around the church. And uh, she gets back, and she finishes, and she sets down the glass of water. And she says, okay, I did it. I'm ready to go. He said, well, wait a minute. He said, I, I want to ask you one question, or I want to ask you a few couple questions. When you were walking around the church, did you see anyone gossiping? She said, no. He says, did you see any hypocrites? She said, no. Did you see anybody on their phone? She said, no. He says, 
why is that? And she said, well, I was too focused on the glass to try to keep the water from not falling out of it. He says, that's exactly right. You are focused on the water. And here at church, you should be focused on Jesus. Can I hear that again? What are we supposed to be focused on? I want everybody to, at home to hear you say that. Come on, this mic microphone's on. Jesus. Amen. They know you're here now. Okay. So that's what we're supposed to be focused on. And so um, she said, huh, that's interesting. That, that I, I, I see now. It's, it's my problem, not yours. It's not the church's problem. I'm the one with the problem. So if any of us are having problems with anything in our church, we need to look at ourselves before we look at anything else. Amen? Amen. Within the church body, the, bo the body of Christ, the church body, unlike the politicians out there who seem to think we're going to shut all the church doors and we're not going to be able to have church, not going to happen. A church is filled with people who are, are full of problems and aren't perfect. The only Jesus can set the perfect example. I want to hear an amen again. So let's focus on him. Amen. amen. I see the same story as an example for Christians focusing on the world. And I look at myself once again. Just like in the church, we need to keep our eyes on Jesus. Even in every, when everything is crashing down in the world. What's happening now in the world has happened before and it will happen again. I know there's teenagers out there that are going, what are you talking about? This is the worst thing that could possibly ever happen. Well, these teenagers never lived through wars, have never lived through other deadly diseases that have happened, and I haven't either in a lot of these cases. I think in 1974, uh, wasn't Vietnam just about over with at that point? Pretty close anyways. I was an infant at that point anyways. So I'm not really, it, th those weren't things that I had to deal with. And then when I was in high school, instead of being shipped off to Vietnam, I was able to go to college. So these people who are, you know, we just have to think about all these things. But the important thing is, once again, to focus on the Lord. And know that the Lord is in control of everything. And that's where we have a problem, is that some people, they go, well, God's in control of everything, everything's going to be all right. Yes, everything's going to be all right in the end. It doesn't mean it's going to be okay now. The Lord says at some point the world is going to end. And we'll be taken care of in glory, but it doesn't mean we're not going to deal with hard times on this earth. So I'm going to go for a soapbox moment. Some of you might not like what I'm about to say, but these are just things that have been bothering me. And all my thoughts and frustrations. I want to mention one thing that sticks out that I can't understand. And this may get me in trouble with somebody else, but I really don't care at this point. I'm confused by some of my friends who say, they won't vote for our current president. These are my Christian friends, some of my Christian friends. And it's because of mainly the way he talks. And I want to say this loud and clear. I wholeheartedly agree with what you think about the way he speaks. Completely and totally. But when I hear the other party or candidate say... They're going to go after our religious liberties. That's one thing right there. I got a problem. Amen. I got a big problem. And I want to give you a few examples of that. Religious liberties, such as the governor of California taking, taking away, uh, telling, church, telling people they can't go to church. Or they can't sing in church. That's religious liberties. Another example is trying to take away tax exemption of churches. Understand something. We're not talking about the church going over to Walmart and buying something and not having to pay taxes. That's not the, that's not the issue. It's taxing churches, property taxes on churches. Do you have any idea how many churches would shut down? We're not Osteen's church. And most of the churches out there aren't. So they would shut down churches. The second thing was fight for the right to abort children. They say, we're going to fight with these people who are going to take away, fight for the right to abort children. Not, not to not abort children, to abort children. That's two. Three, 
censor speech. We've got, we've got people, judges and people in other states of the other party, which I'm sure you can gather what, I'm, what other party I'm referring to, saying that judges are calling for pastors to give their sermons to them so they can approve them. That's sensory speech, not to mention uh, many other things. That Soapbox is almost finished. I just wanted to move. not stand up for the police, not stand up for the military. So my question comes down to, I have to ask, who are you voting for or what are you voting for? We have to leave these individuals out of the equation. Don't worry about the president as an individual. Don't worry about the, vice, the ex-vice president as an individual and look at what they're fighting for and vote for that. Because that's what I'm doing. I, per personally, I don't like the man that's, that's in the office. Not really the issue. But I see what he's doing fighting for our rights. And the other one's not going to. Period. Okay. I could bring up character flaws of numerous people in the Bible. Numerous people in the Bible that were used by God. And I believe he's being used by God regardless of all of his flaws. If I mention Samson, I can get, you're going you're to go, oh yeah, Samson, yeah, he did this. If I mention David, yeah, he, killed, he had someone killed. If I mention Moses, yeah, he killed somebody. Yeah, if I mention, uh, I can, I can mention numerous people that were used by God. But you've got to keep that in mind. Okay, that was where I wanted to go with that. We can't rely on fact checkers because fact checkers are biased. And that goes either way. That goes either way. But what we need to do is rely on the word of God. How about that? Isaiah 5, 20. Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who substitute darkness for light and light for darkness, who substitute bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. We must rely on the word of God more than anything else. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. Think about him in all your ways and he will guide you on the right paths. Amen? Okay. End of soapbox. Was that too bad? I hope not. Nonetheless, I love you. You might disagree with me, but the fact is, is we have to look at the issues, not the people. Have, you, have we brought this on ourselves? How about we, we talk about that? Have we brought this on ourselves? This pandemic, these issues going on in the United States? Or are we making them worse by our disobedience? Second Chronicles 7, 13 and 14. Now look at this. If I close the sky so there is no rain, or if I command the grasshopper to consume the land, or if I send pestilence on my people... And my people who are called by my name humble themselves, pray and seek my face, and turn from their evil ways. Then I will hear them from heaven, forgive their sin, and heal their land. Amen. How many months have we been dealing with this pandemic? It's, or I think we're on... Uh, we're, we're five here, but they've been dealing with it um, in China since November of last year. But the fact is, is that, do you know that a number of people in the United States call themselves Christians? Most people call themselves Christians. If Christians were all praying, I, don't, I think we'd be out of this. Unless this is the end. And the Lord says, well, we've got we to go through with the rest of this stuff because it's just the end. And we're about to, this, we're about to see the end times. But we'd be out of this, I, be, I truly believe. If Christians were being obedient, that's the thing that people seem to forget. They can't just pray and be disobedient the rest of their life. Right now, the most obvious things that are uh, a racial divide, the pandemic, lawlessness, political upheaval, and blatant immorality. You agree with me about that? The most obvious things out right now. And repentance... That big word, repentance, doesn't seem to be on anyone's lips. And even Christ, Christians are trying to justify many of these things. 
We talked about this a minute ago. What takes you out of fellowship with the Lord? Sin. Sin. What is sin? It's, de it's defined as an immoral act considered to be a transgression against the divine law. 1 John 3, 4 says, Everyone who commits a sin also breaks the law. Sin is the breaking of the law. If you notice across the country, people are calling for no law. And I'll hear, I'll, I'll hear an argument from somebody to say, but, well, they're not asking for no law. No, there are people that are asking for defunding the police, and they're saying, we don't want police officers in our community. We'd rather give the money to somebody else and let social workers show up to handle things. Okay, but they're also breaking the law with little or no consequences. You just heard about a police officer just got his head cracked by somebody, and they released the person a day or so later without bail. That's no consequence. If I did that today, I went across the street, and the big thing got riled up, and I hit the police chief across the head with, a, with something, I'd be in jail right now waiting to, waiting to be sentenced at some point, and it wouldn't be pleasant. That's justification. Exodus 20, 4, through five, 4 and 5. Do not make an idol for yourself, whether in the shape of anything in the heavens, above, or on the earth, below, or in the waters underneath. You must not bow down to, to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the father's sin to the third and fourth generations of those who hate me. And if you look at Exodus 34, 14 and Deuteronomy 5, 7, they say basically the same thing. I've said it before. Are we allowing ourselves to be wooed by the world? The Lord warned Moses in Exodus 34, 10 through 17. And the Lord responded, Look, I am making a covenant. I will perform wonders in the presence of, you, of all your people that have never been done in all the earth or in any nation. All the people you live among will see the Lord's work. For what I am doing will you is awe-inspiring. Observe what I command you today. I am going to drive out before you the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. Be careful not to make a treaty with the inhabitants of the land that you are going to enter. Otherwise, they will become a snare among you. Instead, you must tear down their altars, smash their sacred pillars, and chop down their Asherah poles. You are never to bow down to another god because Yahweh, being a jealous god by nature, is a jealous god. Do not make a treaty with the inhabitants of the land or else when they prostitute themselves with their gods and sacrifice to their gods, they will invite you and you will eat their sacrifices. Then you will take some of their daughters as brides and your, uh, brides for your sons. Their daughters will prostitute themselves and their gods and cause your sons to prostitute themselves with their gods. Do not make cast images of gods for yourselves. We're being guilty of that. These things I'm observing in the world, and as, a, as, uh, as I said at the beginning, we are justifying unchristlike behavior, conforming to the world's standards of what we think Christians should be. The world looks at Christians as doormats that shouldn't stand up for themselves and use statements like, I thought you were a Christian. And Christians are just supposed to love people regardless of what they do. What the world wants is Christians to condone and accept sin. Amen? And if we don't, they believe we aren't showing love. The world does not like the word repentance as we bring that again. I want to continue to say that word. They don't like the word repentance. Because it requires drastic change, turning away from sin. I've used this analogy before, and as I look at this picture here, the parent disciplining or scolding a child out of concern. They love their children, and they only want the best for their children.
Christians love people, and they only want the best for people also. So they take this opportunity to share with them as they, know, as they love someone. They, they, say, they say, you know what, this is what I believe, and I want you to understand that I love you so much, I want you to understand that I believe what you're doing is wrong, and I, what I want you to do is change. Because, and I can show you here in, here in the Word of God where I believe I'm right. Is that an unloving thing to say? I don't believe it is. If I've used this analogy, uh, let's see, uh, we are building and worshiping idols in many forms. Computers, televisions, phones, sports, and even family. Family. People think to themselves, you know what? My child has a, has a soccer game today, so I need, to, I need to miss church. Let me tell you something. You don't need to be missing church because of some game. You need to tell that coach, I'm not having my kid on a, on a ball team that meets on, on Sunday. But we're not doing that. We're making exceptions. We're justifying because that means more to us. We're justifying. You need to stop that. You're, 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 you're giving your child a poor example also. We break the law in the most, in the most basic laws. Brother uh, Ken here read the Ten Commandments. I just about guarantee you, if we sat there and wrapped them down, and I, and I sat you down or whatever, I could probably say that most of us have bro- broken the Ten Commandments in some way or form this week. Probably have. Maybe not literally, but figuratively in, in, in certain ways. You've done it because we all sin. But that's why becoming closer and closer to the Lord is, is super important. Our Lord has relieved us from the rituals of, of the laws of the old covenant by dying on the cross for our sins. We owe him more than we could ever repay. The beautiful thing is, is we can make mistakes and be forgiven because of his sacrifice. But repentance is the key, and we should be diligent to seek it. Here's a few things that, as we get ready to wrap up here that will help you. Pray without ceasing. 1 Thessalonians 5.17 says, pray constantly. That's not too unclear, is it? Colossians 4.2 says, Devote yourselves to prayer. Stay alert in, in it with thanksgiving. Ephesians 6.18 says, Pray at all times in the Spirit with every prayer and request. And stay alert in this with all perseverance and intercession with all the saints. So he not only says to pray all the time and persevere, but intercede for others, which means you pray for me, I pray for you. If we're Christians, we love each other, we continue to pray for each other. And then don't worry about tomorrow. Matthew 6, 34. Therefore, don't worry about tomorrow, because tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. I have a, there's a prayer that's out there, and uh, my brother and sister are recovering addicts. And I've heard this pr- prayer in different variations, the serenity prayer. The serenity prayer that's put out by Celebrate Recovery, I like the most. It says, God grant me the serenity, or the calmness, to accept the things I cannot change, to encourage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference, living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hardship as a pathway to peace, taking, as Jesus did, this sinful world as it is, not as I would, would have it, trusting that you would make all things right if I surrender to you your will. If I surrender to your will. That's super important. So that I may be reasonably happy. Not real happy, but reasonably happy. Because the Lord doesn't promise happiness on this earth. And supremely happy with you and forever in the next. Amen? John 14, 20 says, 27 says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Your heart must, be, must not be troubled or fearful. And then the next song that, I, I, that just comes to mind is, Take it to the Lord in prayer. What a friend we have in Jesus. Super, super. I'm not going to sing this one because my throat is, is, is real sore right now. But what a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. 
And what a privilege to carry everything to God and prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless, oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Philippians 4, 6, 6 and 7. Don't worry about anything, but in everything, through prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses everything, every thought, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ. Guard your heart. Proverbs 4, 23. Guard your heart above all else, for it is the source of life. After hearing all of this, the question comes back to, are we worthy? The answer to that question is, if it were up to what we as humans can do, no. And y'all are going, what? I'm worthy. But let me finish. I believe the scripture says he is. He is worthy. And by God's grace and the gift. By God's grace. And the gift of Jesus Christ, we are. This is done by accepting him as Lord and Savior, asking for forgiveness and always working to turn away from sin. Turn away from sin. Repentance. Ephesians 2.8 says, For you are saved by grace through faith, and this is not from ourselves. That's why we're not worthy. It is God's gift. That's how we are worthy, because he gives it to us, but we have to accept him. Just like Paul, I can't look at myself as worthy of what the Lord has done for me. Can you? Can you look at the, do you think you're worthy of it? Because I don't. I don't feel like I'm worthy. I don't feel like there's anything I could do to be worthy. You haven't seen a trend in this message today. I've mentioned the word prayer over and over and over again, as well as repentance. Communication with God is one of the biggest ways to walk worthy and show appreciation or, th or say thank you for the gift the Lord has given us and given us strength to get through our days. That's basically it this morning. I do want to mention a couple of announcements before we get started. But before we end this morning, um, Marietta Oliver passed away this past week, and her funeral will be uh, July 29th at 2 p.m. Well, there'll be more information about that. I just wanted to mention it this morning. As you know, Brother Doug is, is uh, traveling right now, or is, is, should be his destination. I hope they have a good time, and I hope they can do things without being shut up. In, in their rooms or having to be uh, uh, just kept in the rooms and not be able to go do anything. Um, I don't think there's any more announcements this morning, but after, after the closing prayer this morning, we're going to sing Change My Heart, O God. There were three songs mentioned this morning other, other than the ones we sang earlier, but Change My Heart, O God, Jesus, 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 and what a friend we have in Jesus. I want you to think about those songs this week, and you will. That's the wonderful thing about music. You'll think about those songs this week, and when you do, after you get through singing in your head, I want you to take a moment and pray. Pray for the Lord to reveal to you what, what you need to do in your life. Pray for other people. Pray for, uh, pray for the, the country. Do whatever you need to do, but you need to speak to the Lord. Amen? Amen. Well, let's have a word in prayer. Dear Lord, I just want to thank you so much for today. I just want to thank you for this opportunity to stand in front of these, these folks and talk to these people online, Lord. I just pray that uh, uh, the words that came out of my mouth were understood and they were taken well, Lord, and they weren't taken with uh, any issues of animosity or anger, Lord, even if that's the way I came across. Lord, I love you so much, and I just want your will to be done in each one of our lives. I ask for forgiveness where I fail you, Lord. And I know I fail you often. But also ask for forgiveness for the others here. And I ask for you to reveal where we're failing you, Lord, so we can make a change. Thank you, Lord, so much for all you do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.